how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Savikalpasya lakshyatve lakshyasya syavadastuta nirvikalpasya lakshyatvang nadrushtang nachasambhavi. Objection. If the denoted object of that thou art, that is, Brahman, is with attributes, then it becomes unreal. Secondly, an object without attributes is neither seen nor is possible to conceive. Does the earlier text refer to Brahman with attributes? Then it is unreal because of the Vedantic theory that all attributes, names, and forms are unreal. Text 50 Vikalpo nirvikalpasya Savikalpasya va bhavet Adyevya hatiranyatra navastatmashrayadayaha. Reply with a counter question. Does the objection you have raised relate to Brahman without attributes or with attributes? If the first, you are caught in your own trap. If the second, it involves logical fallacies of infinite regress resting on oneself, etc. The term vikalpa has been used in various senses when talking of mind as sankalpa vikalpatmaka. The word means opposite idea or doubt as to which. When talking of a thing being savikalpa or nirvikalpa, it means attributes or differences. When talking of an argument, it means objection or an alternative suggestion. In the present shloka, it is used in the second sense. In the following shloka, it is used in the third sense. We are, however, concerned with the meaning of savikalpa and nirvikalpa, that is, in correctly understanding the meaning of the two words on which the entire argument of shlokas 49 and 50 rests. Text 51. Idang guna kriyajati dravasang badhavas tushu samante nasvarupasya sarvame taditishyatam. The same logical fallacies may be shown in any object having substance, species, quality, action, or relationship. So accept all these attributes as existing, superimposed on by the very nature of things. In the first alternative, your objection relates to nirvikalpa Brahman. It is the same objection you raised against me. In the second alternative, it involves four logical fallacies, that is to say, self-dependence, mutual dependence, reasoning in a circle, and infinite regress. Namaste. <laughs> so here are some profound and deep logical arguments about Brahman. What do we think of them? They're all garbage. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way to understand Brahman logically because, as the objector points out in his argument, that which is without qualities is inconceivable. If something is inconceivable, how can it be understood through logic? So, actually, there's no need to go deep into the logic of all of this. There's several commenters that I read on this verse, like extract a whole species of transcendental logic from these verses. And, you know, yeah, you can do that. But does it really help you to realize Brahman? Does it really help you to understand Brahman in your own experience? 
You know, I, I have doubts about that. I have serious doubts. Because people get hung up on logic. They get hung up on terminology. They get hung up on words and symbols. And they miss the actual experience. This is the problem. Even the neo Advaitins think just knowing about Brahman is equivalent to having realized Brahman, which, of course, is nonsense. And then, you know, when you try to argue with them logically, they bring up that quote from Lao Tzu that the real truth cannot be expressed in words. Well, yeah, we know that. Therefore, sadhana is necessary. Austerity is necessary. Deep contemplation is necessary to actually understand Brahman as an experience, as the self. Which self? Our self. It's not something out there. Brahman is not an object. Therefore, to deal with it as an object by logical reasoning is invalid. It can't be made into an object because it is always the subject. It is the witness, the knower. It is pure consciousness. Even it can have no object. It doesn't matter whether object is there or not. Brahman is absolute and transcendental. Therefore, it cannot be described by logic. And anyway, what is the value of logic? By logic, it's possible to prove any kind of nonsense theory. Huh? You could prove that white is black and black is white. Don't believe me? Well, if you take a scientific instrument called a colorimeter, huh, and you measure something that appears white, say, for example, my Bosma, you will find that it is not actually pure white. In fact, a pure white is almost impossible. So what we really have here is just a lighter shade of black. So you see, what you call white is actually just a very light shade of black. So white is black. Similarly, if you measure black with a colorimeter, you'll find that there is no pure black. All are mixed. So actually, what we call black is simply a darker shade of white. So white is black and black is white, see? This is the problem with logic. Logic does not have a built-in bug detector. So you can misuse logic and, and lead yourself and others completely astray. And, you know, there's, there's nothing to stop you from abusing <laughs> logic to reach some nonsense conclusions. Well, there is one thing, the scriptures. If you study the Vedic scriptures carefully, not just on the surface, not just looking for uh, slokas that support your already realized point of view, <laughs> but really study them deeply, you'll find that everything is there. You don't need to speculate anything. And additionally, whatever you find in the scriptures about Brahman can also be found in our experience. We simply have to look at it the right way. So Brahman, in its native state, is without attributes, without qualities. It is near guna or near vikalpa. Vikalpa meaning differences. Generally, vikalpa can mean a concept, like a thought or desire. It's very similar to the term sankara as it was used by the Buddha. It's a construction, a fabrication, a made up thought. So Brahman can be nirvikalpa without these, or it can be savikalpa with 
all kinds of qualities, attributes, thoughts, differences, etc. Well, how is that? Through Maya. That is really the purport or the aim or the thrust of this entire section is to show the difference between Brahman and Maya. That Brahman in and of itself has no qualities, no activities, no attributes. But when covered by Upadis, generated by Maya, Brahman appears to have all kinds of qualities, activities, and so on. But this, you must understand, is a superimposition, adhyasa. Why do we call it superimposition instead of some other word like filtering or additive qualities or something like that? Because superimposition is actually a term used in videography. When you have two different layers of video, and you superimpose one on the other. Huh? One is the substrate, the background, and the other is the superimposed look or style of video. See, I can change the style here and it changes the look completely. But that's just a superimposition. The actual natural way of seeing is that Brahman has no superimpositions, has no qualities, has no added features. <laughs> all those are Maya, and that's all right, because Maya is a natural part of Brahman. It's not separate from Brahman. It is the same. So, Brahman with qualities or without qualities is the same Brahman. It's just that sometimes it appears to have qualities, but that is only a superimposition. That's not the actual nature of Brahman. So in the same way, Brahman within ourselves is the native, natural, pure consciousness, unaffected by any qualities or superimpositions. And mind, ego, intelligence, even consciousness, what to speak of the body, the senses, and the world, all these activities and different actions coming and going in the world, these are all added to Brahman. These are all superimposed on Brahman. They borrow Brahman's existence, Brahman's consciousness, and Brahman's ananda. Satchit ananda, existence, consciousness, and bliss. So if there's any existence, consciousness, or bliss apparently existing in the material world, it is simply borrowed or reflected from Brahman, which is the original source of everything. And we should see ourself like that. Our self is nothing but Brahman. Now, if it appears that there is a mind and senses and a body, activities, qualities, etc., etc., those are all added, superimposed on Brahman. And it's Brahman's reflection that is bringing those to life and making them appear animated. Whereas actually, all of those qualities belong to Brahman. And Brahman is more than the sum total of all qualities. That's why it's inconceivable. That's why it can't be understood by logic. But it can be understood by introspection. Go within yourself. Identify that which never changes, that which is always aware in every circumstance, and that is the real self, Brahman. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.